Hey everybody, welcome back to Football Talk with Vinny. Um, in today's video, we're gonna talk about the Deshaun Watson um, trade rumors and where I think he should go to. Now, this video is gonna be a little different than the Carson Wentz one, because obviously this is now a top five, unquestionable top five quarterback, right? So this is a situation where there's pretty much every team in the league, you know, should consider trading for him outside of maybe five teams, maybe like the Chiefs, the Bills, right? The Packers, teams like that, that have established, maybe the Ravens, right? You already have a, you have a very good caliber starting quarterback that's playing at top five, top 10 levels, but pretty much every other team should really consider trading for a guy that's this special. And let me just get into the contract real quick, kind of like what I did with the Carson Wentz one. So if he is cut, then that's never going to happen. He's owed $67 million. If they keep him, the Texans owe him 15.9, and if they trade him, they owe him 21.6. So obviously if they trade him, they owe him a little bit more money, but this is a situation where he's essentially forcing a trade, right? If he does not want to play for the organization, you have no choice. The good news is it's not like a Carson Wentz situation where you're not going to get anything for Carson Wentz, I don't think, or at least not going to get much. Whereas with Deshaun Watson, you can get so much back in return that it could help rebuild your franchise. And then the good news for teams that are trading for him is this year, his cap number is extremely manageable. He's only owed $10.5 million this year. And the reason is his extension actually doesn't kick in until 2022 because he signed a four-year extension. So in 2022, he's owed $35 million. Third, 2023, he's owed 37. 2024, he's owed 32. And 2025, he's owed 32. That actually makes it when you trade for him, you have to pay him $146.5 million over five years, which makes the annual average value of 29.3. Might seem high, but again, that's actually not bad. If he's paid an average of $29.5 million, he would be the 11th highest paid starting quarterback. He'd actually be right behind Ryan Tannehill, who's paid exactly $29.5 million for his contract. So to get a guy who's an unquestionable top five MVP caliber starting quarterback and to pay him the 11th highest paid salary moving forward is a steal. Now, obviously, the fact that you're going to have to give up significant draft capital as well as maybe some players on your roster is going to offset the salary you're going to save from, pay from trading for him. But still, nonetheless, you are getting a top five starting quarterback. So obviously with this video, it could be five hours long. I can go over pretty much every single team. So uh, there's probably gonna be a lot of teams that I don't name, or at least I don't go over, um, just because I think the trade packages that they could offer are gonna be nowhere near some of the trade packages that other teams can offer. And obviously if you're the Houston Texans, you're only going to make a trade that makes the most sense for you and you get the most back in return. So I kind of just tried to think of like logical trade destinations that could give up a lot for him that the Texans would actually try to, you know, want to give up. And obviously trading him within the division. So a team like the Colts is out of the discussion because I just don't think there's any way. I don't care if the Colts say they'll give you every single draft pick they have for the next three years. I don't think you do it still because you're not going to want to play Deshaun Watson twice a year and have him win Super Bowls in a Colts uniform knowing that he was on your roster. So I'm going to start with the easy one, the Dolphins, right? Very high trade rumors for him going to the Dolphins. Pretty easy trade package to put together. Something along the lines of Tua, maybe both your first round picks this year and maybe a first rounder next year. Um, I think that if the Texans do end up trading Deshaun, I think he's going to go for a lot, right? We saw Matthew Stafford go for two ones and a three. Now, obviously, the reason why it was two ones was because they threw in Jared Goff, right? If they didn't, it probably would have just been a one and a three for Matthew Stafford. But even if you look at it from that perspective, if Stafford was going to go for about a one and a three, well, Deshaun Watson is playing at a higher level right now. He's much younger, right? So. Like, you're going to have to give up multiple first round picks, three or four first round picks, right? Now, obviously, if you add Tua, that essentially counts for a first round pick. So you add your third overall pick this year, they have another first as well. So if you add both of those first round picks and Tua, you're now at about three first round picks, which is why I think they may have to give up next year's first as well. Which, again, if you were to bring Deshaun Watson to your team, Next year's first round pick may be in the 20s, if not in the 30s, right? You may be in the AFC Conference Championship game or the Super Bowl if you add Deshaun Watson to a defense that was already a top five defense in the league last year. So from the Dolphins perspective, I think this one makes too much sense to really not get this done. 
Um, you know, even if the Texans, again, ask for three first round picks in Tua, I still do that every day of the week. You add Deshaun Watson to your team, who I guess, you know, I get it. You trade Tua away, he could potentially be a top five quarterback but you're getting an actual top five quarterback already in Deshaun Watson. So to me, it's a no-brainer. Another team I think is logical trade destination, and I hope this does not happen, which is Deshaun Watson to the football team. As a Cowboys fan, I do not want to play Deshaun Watson twice a year, so please don't let this happen. But if you're the football team, it just makes too much sense, right? Like you are literally a quarterback away from being a Super Bowl caliber team, right? You gave New or New England, <laughs> you gave the Bucks all they could handle in the first round of the playoff game, and that was the Super Bowl eventual Super Bowl champions, right? And you gave them all they could handle with a backup quarterback, right? If you had Deshaun Watson and you replay that game with Deshaun Watson, I think it's a maybe a much different outcome there. Now, obviously, with the football team, it's a little tougher because you don't have that high draft pick as you did make the playoffs, right? So you might have to give up some players, or if you don't give up some players, maybe it's a situation where if you're the football team, you just give up maybe your first, your second, your third round pick for the next two years, maybe even three, right? Where it's like, okay, well, you're giving up three first round picks, three seconds and three thirds, right? So you're giving up a ton of draft capital, but a lot of your players are already on their rookie deals, so you don't have to you know, necessarily get a lot of players from the draft. Because a lot of teams that are good, right, you're paying a lot of players a bunch of money, like your quarterback and other positions, so you have to use the draft to bring in young talent to offset the high contracts you're paying to your high star players. Well, the football team has a lot of their star players are on their rookie deal still, so you can trade a lot of that draft capital and pay Deshaun Watson his money to instantly become a Super Bowl contender, I think, for the next easily three to four years. Now, obviously, I'm gonna throw a couple teams in here. Like I said, I'm not gonna go over every team, but you know, some teams like the Broncos, Panthers, Bears, I think are all interesting trade destinations for them. Their trade packages, I don't think would be as great um, right, because if you're a team like the Panthers, yes, you have it in the seventh or eighth overall pick. Um, but, you know, obviously you're paying Teddy Bridgewater a lot of money this year, and I don't think that's an asset that the Texans are going to want. So now it's going to be a situation where you're going to have to pay Teddy Bridgewater for this year, and you're going to have to pay Deshaun Watson for this year. Um, but I guess because Deshaun's only at $10.5 it's manageable, and then next year you cut Teddy Bridgewater. So essentially you're paying the quarterback position, I think, around $30 million for this year. But... I'm just thinking of like, what would you give up in return, right? And I don't see much, right? It's gonna be after thing like the football team where you give up a lot of your first, second, third round picks for this year, next year, you know, maybe the year after, right? You know, like if you went to like an extreme case, maybe you give Christian McCaffrey, right? But again, you're getting Deshaun Watson. And I know if you're a Panthers fan, you're like, no, we're never gonna trade Christian McCaffrey. But, you know, I think to get a franchise quarterback, you may consider it. Um, because again, I just don't think that you would be able to compete with some of the trade offers, right? Like if Miami says, hey, we'll give you two, uh, our two first rounders this year and a first rounder next year, if you are the Texans and you could take that trade package, or you could take the Panthers trade package, which if you don't include a great player like, you know, Christian McCaffrey, what are you giving up? You know, first, a second, a third for the next two or three years? Like, you may just take the Dolphins three first round picks in the next two years and two, uh, right? And one of those picks are the number three pick in the draft. You may take that over a bunch of picks for second and third rounders the next two or three years. Same thing with the Broncos, right? They pick ninth, right? I guess maybe this one's a little better if you added maybe Drew Locke. And if you're the Texans, at least you can get a young starting quarterback and you just hope that he develops and grows. But even still, you're going to have to trade a lot of your draft picks if you're the Broncos. Um, also, like if you're the Texans, I probably would still like Miami's um, if they were going to offer three first round picks and two I would rather take that trade package rather than pretty much anything Denver could really include unless they included some of their young star receivers but the whole reason why you trade for Deshaun if you're Denver is because he has a lot of those young weapons to throw to so I don't know if you want to trade those pieces out kind of doesn't make sense so a couple interesting ones I have is the New Orleans Saints now obviously as of this video they are, um, I just looked at the overthecap.com, they are now $69 million over the cap. They did a restructure with Drew Brees' contract to push some more dead money to the 2024 season. So they're trying to really, put, uh, the 2023 season, excuse me, they're really trying to push some of their dead money back. But 
The reason why this is interesting, obviously the salary cap is gonna be a huge issue, is if you're in New Orleans, you're in a situation where you know you're not gonna be able to pay a lot of these young draft picks that you took that all hit, you can't pay all of them. So if you're New Orleans and you offer some of those players that you know you can't re-sign anyways to the Houston Texans and maybe a couple of first round picks, it might be enough to get the deal done, right? If you include some guys, you know, like Marshawn Lattimore, Marcus Davenport, right? And then the offensive tackle, Ryan, don't remember his last name. Um, but if you include some of those young players and some first round picks, well, if you're the Texans, you're like, okay, well, we're getting a lot of young Pro Bowl players that have already produced at a Pro Bowl level. Plus, we're getting some draft picks. Yes, we're not getting the quarterback, but we can maybe use some of those draft capital to maybe trade up in this year's draft or maybe just, you know, be a decent team this year and maybe draft your quarterback next year, right? And you can go that route. Obviously, this one's kind of a stretch because the, the New Orleans Saints have so much dead or so much negative towards the cap that they have a lot of work just to get under the cap. Now, obviously, like I said in the beginning of the video, the good news is Deshaun Watson's cap hit this year is only 10 and a half million. So if you're the Saints and you can get close to that even number, and now maybe you trade a couple of your good players away and you can get to that 10 and a half million dollar number, right? And you bring Deshaun Watson and even if you lose a little bit on defense, when you bring in a guy like Deshaun Watson, especially if you're Sean Payton, you're essentially bringing in another Hall of Fame quarterback that Drew Brees, like Drew Brees and Sean Payton were the last 10, 15 years. Sean Payton and Deshaun Watson can be that for the next 10 to 15 years. Two more teams that I kind of wanted to go over just because a little interesting. Um, one is the San Francisco 49ers. And to me, when you're looking at trade packages, none of them make sense unless you start the conversation with Nick Bosa, right? Nick Bosa obviously had a very terrible injury this year, so didn't play, but the rookie year he had was so fantastic. He had, he was so dominant. He had so many pressures that he is, you know, essentially as long as his injury doesn't derail him, he's on his way to a Hall of Fame career, I think, as a DN. And again, if I'm the Houston Texans, no amount of draft capital, I think, is going to be able to compete with a team like the Dolphins. So if you throw in Nick Bosa and a couple of first round picks, let's say, say Nick Bosa and three first rounders, now it's a little more enticing because you're getting one of the most dominant pass rushers in the game today. Plus you're getting some draft capital to rebuild your entire roster, right? So I think that would be enticing um, if I'm the Houston Texans to where it's maybe starting to compete with the um, Miami Dolphins offer. But again, if you don't throw in a guy that's like as dominant as Nick Bosa, I just don't think you can come up with anything close to a trade package that would be acceptable for the Texans. The very last team I kind of want to go over, I don't think this will happen, um, but it's my team. So the Dallas Cowboys. I think that there is a scenario in which I see the Dallas Cowboys offering obviously Dak Prescott and maybe the 10th overall pick for Deshaun Watson. I think if you're the Texans, you would seriously consider this, right? Because if you're the Houston Texans, again, they've stated multiple times they don't want to trade Deshaun Watson because they know what they have. But if you're able to get a guy like Dak Prescott, which, you know, I, even as a Cowboys fan, I, I do realize that Deshaun Watson's a better quarterback, but I think of any trade package you could receive from any team, you know, I guess short of Jacksonville giving you the first overall pick and you being able to take Trevor Lawrence, Dak Prescott gives you the best player, period, of any trade package you could ever get, right? So if you're able to get a guy like Dak, you don't have to go to full rebuild. Now you can use some of your cap space that you're going to have. Obviously, you want to sign Dak to a long-term deal, but you're going to have to now use your, the rest of your draft capital and your salary cap space to maybe sign some free agents to try to make you know, the offense and the defense around Dak Prescott a little better. Now, obviously, this is a crazy trade scenario. I think um, I haven't really heard too much of it. I think this morning, actually, I did hear some news on ESPN about it. Um, they were kind of talking about maybe a Dak Prescott for Deshaun Watson trade, which I think is a little crazy that it's taken this long to kind of come up with those trade scenarios because I think if you're the Texans, it makes a lot of sense, right? Because you're getting a guy like you know Dak Prescott, who is a Pro Bowl caliber quarterback. And if you're Dallas, if you are still hesitant to sign Dak, which I don't understand why, like, you know, we'll get to that in a different video, but I don't understand why. 
But if you're still hesitant to pay Dak and you're able to get a guy like Deshaun, which I think everyone is in agreement that he's worth every penny he's making, right? If you're Jerry Jones, you get the quarterback that you think is worth the money. Plus, okay, sure, you don't have the 10th overall pick, but at least you're getting a guy that you now have locked up long term, right? So I think it makes sense for everyone. Obviously, if I'm Dallas, me personally, I just signed Dak to the extension. I take a defensive player or maybe an offensive player with that 10th overall pick, and I try to just, you know, run it back with the roster that we have. And then the very last team I want to get into, and it's the reason why I left them for last, is the New York Jets. Um, so obviously, it's been rumored, right, that they should make a trade for Deshaun Watson, right? They have the number two pick in the draft. They have Sam Darnold. They have two picks this year. They have two picks next year, right? So if you get into a situation, let's just say hypothetically that Miami is willing to offer Tua and their two first round picks this year and a first round next year. That means if you're the Jets, you may have to offer Sam Darnold your two first rounders this year and a first rounder next year, right? To even compete. But even then, if you're the Houston Texans, you might take Tua over Sam Darnold just because if you are the Houston Texans, you're rebuilding. And I believe Sam Donald's going into his last year of his deal. So he's either going to have to be a franchise tagged or um, you're going to have to sign into a long-term deal. Whereas with Tua, he's only on the second year of his deal. So you have essentially three more years of Tua before you can pick up his fifth year option and then, you know, sign into a long-term deal. So you have more time to build your roster out to see Tua develop as a quarterback before making the decision. So... It might actually be a situation where if you're the Jets, you might have to give up all four of your first round picks and Sam Darnold. Now, just me, if I was the owner of the Jets, I'm actually not making that trade. And I know it's crazy because I know Deshaun Watson's a top five quarterback. It's the reason why I left the Jets for last in this video. I'm just not doing it. Um, I think Sam Darnold is a capable quarterback. I think a lot of times we don't understand that football is a team sport. And it doesn't matter who you are as a quarterback, you can only be as successful as those around you. Everyone really believed this when they were saying this last year that Brady was washed up and he was no longer the same quarterback. Meanwhile, me and some other people were saying, hey, no, it's the weapons around Tom Brady. Yes, Brady's getting older, but it's the weapons or the lack thereof around Tom Brady in New England. What happens? He goes to Tampa Bay, he puts up 40 touchdowns, or I think it was like 35, 36 touchdowns, 44, 4,600 yards, and wins the Super Bowl. So clearly, it wasn't that Brady was getting older. Yes, he's getting older, but he was still able to play at an elite level. Now, obviously, I'm not comparing Sam Darnold to Tom Brady. All I'm saying is I think Sam Darnold gets a bad rap because he's never had a talented roster pretty much his entire you know, career so far to this point. So I think... If you're the Jets and you're able to use these two first round picks and the rest of your draft and your draft capital that you still have because you do have a lot of cap space with the Jets this offseason and then you're able to build around him and then next year you're going to have two first round picks and you build around him. I think that's a better decision for your franchise going forward because even if Sam Darnold is not the answer, right? If you go into this season and you use your first two round picks on some players that can help Sam Darnold and maybe you bring in some free agents and Sam Darnold doesn't work out and you can clearly now say okay we've surrounded Sam Darnold with some talent he's not the guy that's fine you now have two first round picks next year that you can use to move up in the draft to take your franchise quarterback right but I think trading everything to get Deshaun Watson is not going to help you because you're going to have Deshaun Watson on a bad football team right even though the Texans only won four games last year, offensively, they still had a decent football roster, right? You had a lot of weapons. You had, you know, your offensive line play was not that great. But again, if you go to the Jets, your offensive line play is not going to be that great either because you won't have a high draft pick to take another tackle, which is what they're projected to take if they don't go quarterback, right? Of course, you have Mekhi Becton, but the other offensive linemen are not really that great. Your weapons are obviously not that great. So now if you have to pay Deshaun Watson, which again, this year, you don't have to pay him much, but maybe bring in one free agent wide receiver, right? But you're just trading too many assets, I think, if you're the New York Jets, to where it's just a better decision to not give all that up. I think Miami's, you're in a different situation because Miami already has a well-built defense. You have a decent offense, right? Your offensive line is okay. You have a decent amount of running backs. Your weapons are decent, right? 
but you as the Miami Dolphins are essentially a quarterback away from being able to, I think, compete for a championship, especially when you go from Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tua, which, you know, no disrespect to Tua, he's a young player, he didn't play that well. But if you can upgrade to Deshaun Watson, I think if you're Miami, you instantly become a Super Bowl contender. I think if you're the Jets and you give all that up for Deshaun Watson, you're still not a Super Bowl contender. I think you're, you're essentially in the same spot where the Texans are in now, where you have no draft capital, you have no, you know, ways to improving your team and yes okay you have Deshaun Watson but you have no ways of improving your team right so now you're going to have to hit on your second third fourth fifth sixth round picks which is very difficult to do statistically so that's going to do it for the video though um, comment below what you think of the trade offers that I have you know do you think he's going to go for as much as I think he's going to go for or do you think he's going to go for a lot less or do you think he's actually going to go for more also, if I didn't mention your team, do you think that your team should trade for him? Obviously, like I said, I think about 25, 26 teams should probably realistically look to try to trade for Deshaun. It's just, do you think your team will have a package that's going to be able to beat some of these high teams like the Dolphins and the Jets with all their picks that they have? But that's it for the video. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I look forward to making another video. Thank you guys so much.